your energy forecast for Tuesday, May 21st. So today we have the moon in Scorpio energy. Of course, it took a while, but we did lock into the Scorpio energy early last evening. And we are going to do a little bit of research, a little bit of exploration, a little bit of detective work, if I do say so myself, in order to unearth the mental and emotional blockages that are preventing us from moving on to this next chapter. Of course, the Scorpio energy, we are doing some shadow work. We are not afraid to kind of take a look at the darker parts of self. And that means that we are going to have a couple of aha moments pop off here today that's going to help us change the game. Of course, we are fresh into Gemini season. If you haven't listened to that astro forecast or downloaded your Zodiac season e-guide, I'm going to recommend that you do those things in order to get in alignment with the energies. Of course, it's been a little bit turbulent diving into this Gemini energy and especially coming out of a fixed earth sign such as Taurus season, we need a little bit of time to adjust, but we're not getting it. Why? Because we're moving very quickly towards that full moon in Sag and wrapping up Venus's transit through her rulership. So today is a very quiet day. There's only six different aspects taking place here today. Five of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Scorpio is going to make a very awkward interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations. We have a new willpower, a new discipline that we're trying to tap into because, of course, we are collapsing the limited and restricting beliefs of the old version of self. And from that, there are new wants, new needs, new desires, new visions, new goals, new dreams emerging that we are going to have to rearrange range, restructure, redesign our inner realm to start orienting to. Once we get the inner realm in check, we are going to be able to engage the physical body, take action and make moves to start building towards something new. This is water on water action. Water is very cleansing, very purifying, very changing, very transformative. But right now we're doing a little bit of detective work again, trying to unearth the heavier emotions and mental blockages that that again are very attached to the old version of self. This is going to give us a little bit of a down to earth, logical, practical point of view on where it is in our inner realm. There's still some connection to the past, still some connection to the old and where it is that we are experiencing a little bit of hesitancy to actually boss up, to actually take on these new roles, these new responsibilities, these new commitments, these new obligations. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, of course, in his place of power in this Pisces energy. Again, another water on water action, which we love because, yes, it's very emotional. Yes, it's very intuitive. Yes, it's very revealing. But it's also where the major change and transformation has to take place first and foremost. So, of course, Neptune and Pisces energy is our dreams. It is our imagination. It is our creativity. It is our intuition. This is a little bit of a refresher, reminder, if you will, on what it is that we're actually working towards, what it is that we're trying to change, what it is that we're trying to transform and where it is that there's a new intuitive higher self calling. We want a deeper meaning, deeper mission, deeper purpose in our lives. And this is kind of reminding us what it is that we're fighting for. The moon is then going to directly oppose and sit across from Mercury. Mercury, of course, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. He is in Taurus energy. He's now in his rulership over Gemini season. And so we're a little bit tunnel vision on a certain plan, on a certain thought, idea, direction, concept, inner dialogue, and inner narrative. Now, emotionally speaking, the moon is our heart space, Mercury being our head space. They're sitting across from each other in the zodiac wheel because, of course, Scorpio energy and Taurus energy do sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel, which means that our heart and our head we're at odds. Why? Well, because Mercury, of course, in this Taurus energy wants to build, wants to grow, wants to create something new. The Scorpio energy very emotionally and intuitively 
I'm going to say strong enough to realize that we're not well equipped to make the kind of changes that we know that we have to make at this point. And so emotionally speaking, we realize that there is a major change and transformation needed in our mood, in our attitude, in our perspective, in our thoughts, in our dialogue, in our narrative that needs to take place long before we're gonna be able to take action and actually start executing the steps, the path, the plan, the strategy in this new direction. Even more than that, when communication is involved, because of course, Mercury does rule over communication as well, we aren't really on the same page, meaning Mercury being in this Taurus energy is very matter of fact, is kind of leaning towards logic and practicality, doesn't really open the door that much to emotions and intuition, where the moon being in Scorpio, that's all we're doing. We are only concerned with our emotions. We're only concerned with our intuition. There may be some heaviness, some weight on our heart space that we want to get off of our chest. But again, communication, probably not going to be well received by whoever it is that we have to say these things to. So again, an inner conflict, a power struggle between our focus, what we want to be focused on, what we want to be concentrated on, what we want to be able to actually communicate and articulate versus we're kind of caught up in our feels. We're caught up in the intuitive landscape when Mercury is only concerned about the intellectual landscape. The sun now shining a very bright light in this Gemini energy going to semi square with Mars. Mars is the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in this Aries energy, his rulership creating a lot of restlessness, a lot of ants in our pants, some agitation, some frustration, some, I'm going to say excitement and inspiration, but right now I'm going to say that our impatience is definitely triggering and activating some not so nice thoughts and feelings, throwing us into a little bit of a tantrum, if you will. And because the sun is shining a bright light on the mental plane, on our thoughts, on our opinions, on our perspective, on what it is that we have to say and get off of our chest, Mars being semi-squared is definitely putting us in a little bit of a aggressive state of mind especially because the want, need, and desire to take action and make moves is definitely building. And the pressure that we're feeling to make these particular moves is putting us in a situation where we're a little bit edgy, anxious, we're a little bit agitated, if you will. And the impatience is definitely getting to us right now. The ants in our pants are biting our butts very aggressively. And so, yes, this is going to be a very important lesson in patience, which many of us were not born with and still have not found a place to purchase them from. But at the same time, this is a challenge on whether or not we can get a grip over our energy, over our mood, over our attitude, over our mental plane. The sun now in Gemini energy is pushing us to be a little bit more strategic in our thinking, a little bit more empowered with our inner dialogues, our inner narrative. And so the tantrum-like energy that Mars and Aries, typically speaking, can pop off with, we're trying to talk ourselves out of it. We're trying to talk ourselves and calm ourselves down. And we are trying to get a much better understanding, lay of the land, if you will, on the path, the plan, the strategy that we need to be kind of in alignment with before we can take action and make those moves. So there's definitely an overwhelming amount of energy in our physical body bodies that if you don't give it a healthy outlet, it is going to be projected out into the world and probably onto some people that don't deserve that particular wrath. Now, the moon in the Scorpio energy going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune. Again, in this Pisces energy, water on water action. Let me just say that this is going to help kind of cool us down, smooth that friction, that aggression over to a certain extent. But it's also going to put us in a situation to do a deep dive in our emotions and our intuition to see where it is that this anger and frustration and agitation and restlessness is actually trying to bring something to our awareness because we have ants in our pants because we are anxiously 
awaiting this particular major change and major transformation, there is a little bit of an aha moment, a revelation, if you will, that we're supposed to be having by realizing where it is that we are building and cultivating a brand new excitement, a brand new anticipation, a brand new inspiration that typically speaking, we don't know what to do with. It's hard to hold on to that energy, that label, when the restlessness, the impatientness, the aggressiveness is definitely in the backdrop, ready to push us into our ego programming, reacting in a horrible way to the pause energy that we're currently in. So the moon and Neptune are kind of coming together to kind of cool us down emotionally, to smooth things over, to give us the reminder that if we actually want to manifest the goal, the vision, the dream that we are trying to piece together in our mental plane, that low, slow, steady pace is going to help us win the race, which means that we have to calm our butts down, that Mars and Aries energy needs to be put in its place and we have to really test ourselves where energy management is concerned. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Scorpio making a very tough interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. And of course, that is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, to reach our, let's call it new quest, new adventure for what it is that our soul needs us to pursue. The disconnect, the detachment is, is that the moon in Scorpio, we know that we're not well prepared to move on yet. We know that the change, the transformation that needs to happen in our soul, in our spirit, in our emotional realm, in our mental realm hasn't fully aligned yet. And so we're not seeing the growth. We're not seeing the ability to move forward. Instead, we're kind of focused again with the detective hat on, on what is actually blocking us? What emotion are we holding on to what mental narrative is actually preventing us from feeling well prepared and well equipped to actually boss up and move on in our lives again we are going to get down to the nitty gritty truth as ugly as it may be and spoiler alert it has a lot to do with the lack of self-esteem lack of self-confidence lack of self-worth there is an issue here where we don't necessarily believe that we deserve the kind of happiness joy that this particular outcome would actually bring us. So as we unpack some of these shadow aspects, we are going to be revealed to a brand new truth that is going to kind of position us, if you will, empower us, if you will, in a totally different stage of the planning the strategizing that we need to be in right now, especially being in Gemini energy. It's all about information. We have research to do. We have to explore different avenues. We have to figure out the right questions to ask to get the answers that we need to make a well-informed decision. But at this particular juncture, we're just not ready. We're just not well-informed. We're just not prepared to make any kind of major moves.